Hey, what's up? I'm back with another video. Guys, I'm back. As y'all can see, just a couple of days ago, I was really, really, really sick. I'm actually really, really getting better right now. But guys, I feel a little bit better. I feel a whole lot more better, actually. Um, now, we is going to talk about Solange's new album. Number one, I am not the biggest Solange fan, okay? Because I'm more of y'all know, y'all know I'm 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 team B, but that we 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 gonna put that off topic because this is about Solange. Uh, I after really really listening to this album, I really really have to say that it's 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 a pretty okay album. You know, uh, I really really like the fact that Solange is bringing back the 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 real sounds of music, like with drums, with bass lines, with you know, just you know, it's it's not auto tuned. You know, you hear her natural vocals. Um, she actually really is doing an amazing job with this CD. You know, even though I don't I, I don't like the whole album, I, but I, there is maybe like a good four or five songs that I will say that really really catch my attention on this album. Um, I, this is actually my first Solange review because I, I never really had the time to do a Solange review before. Because she hasn't made anything in a while. You know, I didn't get a chance to do Saint Huron because I don't know what happened with that. I, I didn't get a chance to do that. I forgot why because it was a lot going on. But I am glad that I am taking the time out to do something. You know, seeing as though that this is the very first video, I want to, you know, just show my respects to Solange because she is an amazing singer. You know, I'm just not the biggest fan of her music, that's all. Yes, we could just jump right into it. You know, I don't want to keep you guys too long with this video, but I'm just going to just tell you guys what I think about it. The first song, Rise, uh, was just basically like the intro to the album uh, when it came on. Weary um, was a pretty okay song. You know, I guess that this song is just basically saying how um, your body can be weary, you know, when you're, uh, you, you know, your body gets weary when you are doing things and I guess that's just basically what she's saying on the song, you know, how uh, you have to struggle uh, you know, especially in a black community, and I think this is I uh, think that's another thing that this album is relating to us as blacks. That's why it's called. That's why the album is called "A Seat at the Table" because it's another lemonade esque. Uh, I'm sorry to to go off topic, but this is just the roots of black people, you know, uh, and that's kind of what Beyonce did with Lemonade. But anyway. I really, really, really like the fact that this album, you know, speaks about black excellence, you know, about black people standing up. You know, most of the songs when you listen to on this album, it really, really, really has, uh, uh, you know, deep meaning and deep messages in within these songs. And that's what Weary, I, bas I, I think, was basically talking about. The next song I liked, it was Cranes in the Sky. You know, it, it had a nice, beautiful rise to it. You know, you hear, like, it just had, it's just the realness of music. With cranes in the sky, I definitely, definitely, definitely really liked that song. It was amazing. It was dope. Uh, the next song after that, uh, well, basically it started off with an interlude, you know, called "Dad Was Mad." You know, I guess it was Matthew Knowles being mad about something. But anyway, it goes into "Mad" featuring Lil Wayne. Um, uh, it's just basically, it just, I, I really, really like "Mad." I think that it's a nice beat to it. You know. You know, I really, really like it. It's kind of jazzy. And I really, really liked it, the beat. I really, really liked it, the message. is just basically saying, why do you have to be mad about the things that are going on in your life? You know, uh, uh, I really, really like Mad. I think that that's probably one of my first favorites of the album. Uh, it's very nice. And I even think Lil Wayne even added a nice verse to it. Even though I'm not the biggest Lil Wayne fan like I used to be, I still... I still mess with the song. I still like it. <clears throat> uh, don't you wait. Uh, it was uh, don't you wait was pretty cool. You know, I have to listen to it again. The don't you wait was kind of giving me a little Diana Ross 
flavor, you know, it just kind of had a 70s flow to it, which which the majority of the songs of this album do, but Don't You Wait, um, it's amazing, it's amazing, it's amazing. Now, we get to the Black Excellence part of the album uh, after Don't You Wait, which is uh, an interlude by Tina Taught Me, basically is saying um, uh, why blacks are so underrated, why blacks, are, why blacks deserve to be um, Tree, why, 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 why we deserve to have black history, why we deserve to be um, praised, because, you know, uh, we deserve it, we deserve it, and this is one of the things I really, really like about this CD, because it, 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 it makes you feel beautiful about being a black person, now this is not a racial issue, I'm not trying to start anything, I'm not trying to be racial, but at the same time, it really, really speaks about black excellence, um, and this is what I call the black excellence part of the album, because Throughout all the songs or throughout all the interludes on this album, you really, really get the beauty and you really feel beautiful about being an African-American uh, man or woman or whatever you feel. And this is one of the things I really, really liked about this uh, part of the album. Uh, then after the Tina taught me, you know, which is Mama Tina knows, y'all know who she is. Uh, then we got Nine Don't. Touch My Hair is basically just the beautifulness featuring Sampha, who is an amazing uh, singer. He does, like, he's done stuff with Drake, as you all know. Uh, a lot of people, he's done stuff with a lot of people in the music industry, uh, The weekend. But anyway, Don't Touch My Hair is just so beautiful. I'm going to tell you one of the things I really, really, really like about this. I mean, it's just, it, it, it kind of reminds me, it kind of gives me a, a Diana Ross a little bit. Uh, it has a great 70s, 80s flavor to it. Uh, the beat is very analog. Um, I just really, really like it. I think it's just a beautiful song. Uh, just talking about uh, loving yourself, uh, 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 about when people, you know, just don't touch my hair. Just accept me. But don't touch me, you know, basically is what I'm basically getting off this song. So I definitely really like Don't Touch My Hair. I thought that was the beautiful part. Uh, the interlude after that was This Moment. Um, then after that, This Moment was basically saying this is... Uh, the, the guy on the interlude was basically saying, this is our moment to shine, basically, is what I'm picking up from that. Then we get into... Um, 11, Where Do We Go? Where Do We Go is just... It's, it's a pretty okay song. I won't say it was my favorite, but it's talking about us as a people. Where do we go when everything gets bad in the world? You know, where do we go to? We all have to have a place to go to when we're bad. You know, when we're in the jam. And uh, this is one of the things I pick up about that song. For Us, By Us, uh, F, which is FUBU featuring The Dream, uh, BJ the Chicago Kid, and Tweet. Now, For Us, By Us... We is basically talking about us as a people. We all have things that we invent in our lives, and it's for us, it's by us. You know, uh, what we invent is our treasure, you know, basically is what I'm picking up about 13. Number 14, Borderline, an ode to self-care, featuring Q-Tip. But Q-Tip wasn't on the song. He was on the beat, which I know, because Q-Tip, he hasn't rapped in... <sighs> I don't know, but anyway, I really, really liked it, the beat, this was probably the most up-tempo beat of the album, which is probably one of my favorites, um, uh, 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 uh right, right apart from number 18, but this is number 14, anyway, Borderline, an ode to, to self-care, basically, it's just a, a note to take care of yourself, and uh, just to, you know, be cleansiness, be clean, cleanliness in within yourself, is what I'm picking up about this, uh, interlude, uh, after that, uh, was featuring Kelly Rowland and Nia. Now, we all know that this is, in this part of the album, and the majority of these songs, Solange does kind of sound like Kelly Rowland. You know, they have always done things in the past, and even on Kelly's uh, solo albums, uh, well, her first one, Simply Deep, we know that Solange did a song with Kelly Rowland, but I really, really, really like the interlude. I thought they sounded amazing when they were harmonizing together. Number 16, Junie. I think that this was probably my least favorite song on the on the album. Uh, I have to listen to it again because I really, really don't understand what she's saying on the song. Uh, so maybe somebody can help me out because I have to listen to it again. You know, I only listened to it one time, but that was that. Then seventeen is 
the interlude, No Limits. It was pretty cool. Uh, just a little interlude before Don't Wish Me Well, which is number 18. Now, this song blew my entire head off. Now, you can say that she did kind of have a little bit beyonce is a little bit flavor with this song which is which is okay because that is her sister but i really 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 like listening to it i really really thought that the song was amazing i think that solange sounded amazing yo she when she did her harmonize her harmonizing and her harmonies and things like that she really really did kind of sound like beyonce a little bit but that's okay because they got the same bloodline but i think that number 18 is one of my favorites on the album i think i listened to it like three times already or two times already uh, you know, I just picked the songs that I liked it the the most, uh, and uh, and 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 went with it. But don't wish me well was one of them. The next song after that was uh, an interlude called Pedal Pedal Pedestals. Okay, Scales featuring Kalila. Now Kalila is amazing. Now <clears throat> I'm waiting for her to make an album because she's I've been a fan of her for a while now. But uh, you know, and just to hear her do a song with Solange, they both kind of have the same flavor and music, which is what I really, really like that they both did a song together. Now, Scales was was, was, was kind of retro and electronic, but <laughs> I thought it was a nice song to end the album, right along with uh, Closing, uh, The Chosen Ones. Now, uh, one of the things I like about this album, I'm going to do pros and cons, just for a sec. One of the things I really, really like about this album is the fact that it's talking about, you know, human um, growth and spirituality. It's, that's one. My con is, I think that I would like Solange to kind of switch up her flow in music, okay? The message in the music is good, but Solange is kind of on the weird side, okay? No, 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 no offense, no shade, okay, when it comes to music, okay? Now, um, I'm not going to say that because then people might think, because I'm trying to be biased. I'm not trying to be biased, okay? Just listen, just hear me out. Hear me out. I, I, I like Solange, but I'm not the biggest Solange fan. One of the reasons is is because I think that she doesn't switch up her um, style a little bit. I'm not trying to say she should be like anybody else, but I just would like to see Solange kind of branch out and try other different styles. Now, she does have a good ear for music as far as, you know, a good and a beautiful singing voice, okay? I never said I didn't never like how Solange sang. She's a great singer, but... I would like to see her branch out and kind of do something a little bit more upbeat for future references because she hasn't made an album since 2012, guys. And I forgot what that album sounded like because it was so long ago. But <clears throat> I really, really think that she still did an amazing job. But I just would like her to just switch her ish up just a bit. Okay, now that's my only flaw. I'm keeping it like that. Y'all can check out the album. It's called A Seat at the Table. And it's basically just uh, saying like, uh, uh, it's basically like a gathering. And this is one of the things I like about this album. And I think that she's a very beautiful person. You know, even though I'm not the biggest fan of her, I still gave it a chance and listened to it anyway. So check it out. It's out on iTunes. You can buy it. I don't know if it's going to be in stores. It might. But just check it out and tell me what you guys think about it. What you think about the album? Is it does it meet your needs? You know, because it, it's 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 a pretty okay album. I gotta give it to her. You know, it's not the best in my opinion, but it's a pretty okay album. I have to give it a maybe like an eight out of ten because she 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 is an artist as well. You know, as her as her beloved sister. So this is Forever Brandon TV signing off. And it says.